What's up, Internet? Welcome back to the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Blade Showcase, and possibly the last one we're ever going to do here on the channel. And what better way to send things off than with the legendary hero himself, Adam. Team Adam is the kind of team that is just focused on covering the different archetypes of damage dealers in the entirety of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Laura was a jack of all trades with Jin and Hayes on her team, and then Hugo combining a Geon and Bridget with his own face tanking. Adam pretty much just has everything you need to do as much damage as possible. He is not quite as strong as Jin, but to be honest though, if Jin is first place, second place is not that bad at all. His specials do a great amount and his recharge arts are also nothing to sneeze at. They have a nice satisfying weight to their animations and he's just a really fun character to use overall if you're the player. Mithra is really good too and she's very familiar. All of her passives are exactly the same with a couple of adjustments here and there. Her crit recharge is a bit reduced but that's fine. All it takes is one crit recharge and a step cancel to fully recharge your arts so there's not really much of a loss there. And her passives work very nicely in conjunction with Adam and keeping everything everyone alive. Speaking of keeping everyone alive, her talent art is insanely useful, which I'll talk about later. And then Minoth is just tons of damage, whether it's for AoE or for single target. He does a really good job and he hits many, many, many times. If it's possible to bring up his damage even further, I'm pretty sure he'd end up being the highest damage blade out of all of them, just because his DPS is so crazy. So go looking over at Adam himself. As you can see, his arts are really, really good. He's the most reliable form of launch out of all of the characters without needing to switch in. So you see, like, you have a scenario where Laura does the break, Hugo does the topple, and then Adam quickly follows up with the launch, promptly followed up by Hayes smashing and ruining the party. That being said, though, it is nice to play around with, and it does a fair amount of damage as it is. You can see that the uh, the damage ratio is ex insanely high. You can do around the same amount of damage as the Ogre Smash with the bonus applied, so it's just really good overall. And then there is the Legion Scatter. This is a uh, AoE blowdown effect, not very useful for super bosses but the damage is still quite good but the real reason why Adam is so fun and a standout out of the entire cast is because of transcend transcend cuts your own HP and allows you to extend the duration of a driver combo this is especially good if you want to play around with topples and launches and just either you can use this to stall for more time so that your party members can follow it up with their own driver combos or you can try to stall the launch indefinitely to give yourself bonus damage or you may even want to do that for topples because you do run the risk of the AI switching in for the smash at the worst possible time. Very, very good stuff, and his switch art is another form of topple. So if you find yourself starting off with Mithra or Minoth, and then you see that Laura does the break, quickly switch on Adam, and then you can go straight up with the topple into a launch. It's very, very nice. Now, looking over the accessories, I've given him the fire element for his weapon just because I enjoy having the volcano damage over time. Uh, blade combo and the cool thing about this too is that increases your critical hit rates You're gonna be critting very frequently especially if Mithra is the blade accompanying him and The thing is though just like with all the other characters It's fairly interchangeable if you don't need the electric elements then feel free to give him the fire elements This is my own personal preferred one in terms of the other things you could definitely go for crit heal with the classic metal He is probably the best user of crit heal since his critical rate is so high the only problem though is that I would prefer prefer to leave you in dangerous levels of HP just because it allows you to use Mithra's talents arts. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to increase my damage at the cost of taking more damage, which is exactly what the Abyss Mask is for. The other one is going to be the Ice Headbands. I was debating whether or not I would use this or the Leader's Eye Patch, and the damage is pretty comparable to each other, but the Ice Headband is just a little bit more versatile since it can be used during chain attacks. Now, going over to the pouch setup, I've given him two books from Minoth, and these are the really, really good ones. These are like the last ones you can get overall. 20% increase for both of the books, and a small recharge art. He doesn't really need recharge arts per second, but it is just a nice little bit of a bonus. Plus, party gauge gain is really easy to do, assuming you're playing normal mode. Now, going over to his blades. His blades, of course, we all know who Mithra is, just like with Bridget and Aegeon. The specials of her in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 are going to be the driver arts. They're all AoE, pretty useful overall, and they're all ether. Now, Glimpse of the Future is her talents arts and what makes her so valuable. The moment you become incapacitated and you get revived, you can immediately use this one 
and then you're going to be just good to go. Like, it's just really, really good to have, and it just suddenly shifts all the momentum to your party's favor. If you find yourself in a losing battle, just use Mithra for her passive at least, and you're going to do very, very well. And in terms of the rearguard arts, it's just a couple of buffs, especially Spectral Halo. This is probably her best one, since it, you know, uh, Adam wants as much of that damage as possible. And of course, there is her switch in, which is a smash. It does come in in opportune times if you're not controlling them, but to be honest though, like it's going to happen with any of the characters anyway, whether or not you're playing as Hugo or Laura. Now, going over to her affinity chart, of course, this, like I said before, it's more or less the same with a couple of changes here and there. Foresight increases your evasion and accuracy at max affinity. Once you give them a uh, sunlight chip or a night vision, then it's going to be just fine. Sorry, not sunlight chip, the um, sunlight eye. You could just go ahead and use those ones in con conjunction with this and you'll never miss and you'll build up your arts that much faster. Lightspeed Flurry is the crit recharge that we all know and love with just a bit of a reduction. Now it's down to 60% up from 100. And then Glint, which increases your critical rates. They're all very, very good, but I want to quickly look over at the specials. The level one and level three specials tend to be better in terms of uh, using them during chance acts, especially since Terminal Flash has crit damage increases and it hits many, many times. Chroma Dust is alright too, but the problem is though it does force you to be in the threshold, which isn't that bad considering that you do need to be incapacitated in order to do the talent's arts, but it only hits once so it's not that great. And of course there's Twilight Striker which hits a lot of times anyway, so if you find yourself initiating and the enemy's weak to like electric, then just use Adam because it's the exact same effect. But if you find them weak to light, then this is definitely your go-to. And then, of course, there's the aux cores. I've just for the purposes of this video, I've given her the best ones. So critical up six and affinity max attack six for the very, very obvious reasons. And I've also given her the moon matter chip, which is why her critical rate is 54%. Now, going over to the next plate is Minoth, a very familiar face. Uh, he's Cole from Core Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and he's a really, really fun one to use too. So I want to quickly uh, go over these ones. So this one is a um, cancel uh, ratio increase, which is really, really useful, especially used in conjunction with a talent's art. The really funny thing about Minoth is that you can, since this talent art doesn't cost anything, you just need to be at max affinity. You can actually cancel Duello into another Duello and keep doing that and then go straight into a level three. That's kind of what I do. It's probably not the most efficient way to do it, but it is just a lot of fun. Hurricane gives you evasion uh, during your, um, during this attack, and it's a very lengthy evasion time as well. Definitely not as long as a Geon, but much more lengthy inv invisibility in comparison to all the attacks from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And then finally, there's Castigo, which increases your damage based on how high your HP is. More often than not, you're going to initiate with this, and since we're not playing with crit recharge, it's not crit recharge, crit heal, we're probably not going to be able to get the effect very frequently with this one. And also, just a bit of an aside, this particular switch in lets you be invincible when you switch in, and it also has a small chance of break. It's not very consistent on like with Laura, but it's better than nothing. Now, in terms of the affinity chart, this is an all-new one, so this is exciting. Uh, Santo increases your damage based on every attack cancel you do, and because you're playing as Minoth, and like I said with the talent art, it's really easy to get the 25 that you need to increase your damage, and remember, this bonus does apply to Adam. And then there's Medeo, which increases the, oh sorry, reduces the aggro from your attacks, which is very, very useful because you're going to hit many times. And then Limpio, which increases your damage when you're fighting against a boss or unique. It's not even a level difference, it's just a boss. So yeah, having him in the back is also extremely beneficial, depending on what you're looking for. If you're just looking for more of a all-out attack, Minoth is your guy. But if you want a little bit more of the defensive utility, then Mithra tends to fit the bill a little bit better. And then looking at all of his specials, they're all very, very good. Uh, if you find yourself using Crit Heal, then just spamming level 2 special is the way to go, since it gives you the bonus and it hits a lot. Same thing can be said for Cruceta. Cruceta, it's probably going to be your most used one if you're not using Crit Heal, since it's really easy to build up level 3 with Minoth, like I said, constantly cancel out the talent art and you're going to be good to go. And then finally the Ox Cores, we're going to give him the best that we can. He comes with three slots, might as well make use of them. More critical damage, more damage, and more outdoor damage, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the 
the core ship that I've given him is, I believe, the uh, the Moon Matter ship, because it wants to increase the amounts of critical damage he does, or sorry, not the critical damage, the critical rate he has, and that's exactly what we're trying to see here. But I think that pretty much about does it, though. Adam is a really good team overall, and I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up being a fan favorite, just due to the fact that he's really accessible, really easy to use, and just, uh, just a lot of fun, very satisfying attack animations that really give you the feeling of weight behind each and every one of his attacks. So what we're going to do is that we're going to play a handful of boss battles for this particular video, and I hope you guys look forward to seeing the last sho um, showcase demonstrations for here on the channel, so please look forward to it. Alrighty, so here we are, the Great Crater in Feltley Village, and we're going to fight against Carpathia. Carpathia is a really interesting boss because he is immune to all forms of driver combos until he applies them to himself. So that's exactly what's going to happen here. He also starts off weak to darkness, so that's perfect for Minoth. What we're going to do is that we're kind of going to wait around a little bit, let them take all the aggro, and I am going to try to cancel out as best as I can to ensure that I can get myself to max affinity to make use of the... Uh, the talent art. And off we go! So these cancels outs do also count towards, you know, uh, getting that bonus that bonus damage. So let's just go ahead and spam away at this. And I'll uh, continue doing this for a bit. And we're uh, just like it, we have another level 3. It's uh, This is very, very good gameplay. So I, hope, I hope you guys enjoy. Also, uh, he summoned a bunch of people, but uh, we're going to try the things my way, and uh, not care. There we go. This comes to gravity. We could potentially just do a full level 3 combo by ourselves, if we were so inclined. There we go. I could actually just do a level level 2, because I think that one has better AoE, but uh, why not just go for a gravity 3? This is... Um, Really, really good gameplay, you guys. I hope you guys enjoy uh, Minoth. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was uh, it was pretty ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that fight could have gone even faster, but I just wanted to show you guys how simple it could be to play as Minoth. It's very, very good stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much that, though. Uh, part of the reason why the damage was so high, too, is because, remember, we have those books, which does increase the damage of our specials. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and move on to the next fight for this demonstration. Alrighty, so here we are at Aletta, and we're going to fight against Herculean Gibson. This is a really funny boss fight overall, just because it can really go either way. Uh, you probably already noticed, but Adam has been turned into a water element for this fight, because I know Gibson is going to become weak to water partway through the fight. I've also given Laura the Goddess Choker and the Beta Scope to give as much break resistance reduction as possible, because playing around with the uh, driver combos and the fusion combos with this particular fight is just a lot of fun. Alright, so one thing I also want to remind you guys is that you can always auto-attack cancel each of your talent's arts. This means that whenever you um, cancel out and do a, what's it called, do a talent's art, you will be able to build your specials really quickly. So let's go ahead and pray for another break, if possible. The good thing about Laura is that when she's in the back, she does reduce it just a little bit. Now, I know Mithra's telling me to heal myself, but I'm not going to. The reason why is because now I can use Mithra's talent art, and the talent art is going to be extremely good in this particular fight. Alright, so we see that Topol is coming in. And yeah, I guess we could just make use of this for a little bit too. Alright, so now I can switch into Mithra and do this. So now everyone's going to be invincible for a set amount of hits, which is perfect because he's toppled and can't do anything to us right now. And now I can just go for broke with all my attacks. Wait for another... Uh, I can wait for another uh, break, hopefully, and then a topple. And then right before I activate my level 4, I'm going to activate a special for the topple. Perfect. Here we go. And a launch isn't going to happen, but that's okay. Topple damage is still really, really good. So there's a stone topple, and let's go for the launch. See ya!
<laughs> oh boy, that is quite the combo. As you can see, Hayes is really quick to the reaction when it comes to doing the smashes. It does come at really inopportune times, and this, this exact same thing can apply to Mithra too, if the if the AI is using them. Uh, most of the time, you will try to get your launches in as much as possible, but like it or not, the AI will try to prioritize finishing the driver combo, which is nice, but again, I was trying to look for more of that bonus damage, and we did get it for all that fight though. Like I said, Gibson can go really, really quickly, and honestly, that's part of what makes this so fun, is finding out the different setups. So there's one more boss fight under our belts right now. It's a very familiar one, and I hope you guys enjoyed this last one, uh, because this is also a good place where using fusion combos is extremely beneficial. So see you guys there. And here we are, the very last one. This is a really, really fun boss fight because depending on what strategy you, you use, it's going to last a really, really long time or not that long at all. As with the previous fight, I've given Laura the Break Resist Reduction setup, and I've given Adam his Pyro Sword back so that we can do more damage to his first form. So off we go. So again, just kind of cancel off your abilities as best as you can. Uh, I'm going to switch to Mithra, keep myself a bit healthy, and if ever I die, remember, Glimpse of the Future, extremely good. So again, kind of cancel out your abilities as best you can, and just like that we find ourselves at full, go for the topple. Okay, so now I'm kind of, I'm going to try to weave all these different acts, all these different arts in between each of the transcends that I do, and that's going to be a lot of damage. So build up at level 4, hope for a topple soon. No, not quite. Okay. I was kind of hoping for a topple there. But that's fine though, we did plenty of damage as it is. Maybe we can go for another break? No, not yet. Okay, so now we got hit by that kill, but again, this is not at all a bad thing. Remember, just wait around for Mithra a little bit and then switch into her and do your do your talents art. This is also perfect for stalling around for those for those breaks. Right, waiting for that break, Laura. If not, there we go. So yeah, again, like I said um, in the previous segments, she really does like coming in, that hey, she loves coming in for the slam dunk. And just finish this off. Very, very easy fight overall. Like that's, that's the funny thing about Adam is that you don't really need the chain attacks nearly as much. Although he does serve very well in chain attacks, again, thanks to Minoth. I didn't really get to show very much of Minoth in chain attacks. Of course, it's pretty obvious that he does amazingly well because of how much he hits, and I would prioritize that the most if ever it's time for Adam to do attacks during a chain attack anyway. Uh, Adam is just really nice overall, and like I said at the beginning of the video, he's probably the best contender for uh, leading you to victory in Bringer of Chaos since he can do fusion combos much more easily in comparison to the rest of the members of this party. All the characters of Torn of the Golden Country were very well thought out, and they do their best at just combining what kind of playstyles are available in this particular game. You see, like, you have uh, Laura being the great jack of all trades, and then you see Hyogo combining evade tanking with face tanking, and then Adam just has all these different attack styles and all the tools he needs to just serve at any situation where you need to have as much damage as possible. That last boss fight would usually take a long time, but we got lucky with the breaks, and obviously luck does play a bit of a factor, and definitely will during Burning of Chaos, but otherwise though, he's just a reliable pick overall, and just a lot of fun to play as. Anyways guys, it's been a long time coming, but we finally reached the end of the Blade Showcases. I don't think this will be the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 here on the channel. We might still have room for a few other things, probably some less gameplay related ones, but I do look forward to doing a little bit more up until whenever the next big thing happening to this channel. I'd like to thank you guys all for kind of supporting me and pushing me to continue to do these ones, especially when there were so many Blades to do back when this game first came out. But uh, here we are at the very end. And uh, what better way to see things off than with the legendary hero himself. It's really, really good, you guys. And anyone that has not gotten the expansion pass, totally recommend it. It's just the perfect send-off to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, 
easily my favorite game in recent memory, and uh, I look forward to seeing what else the team does from new games, and whatever that may be. So until then, guys, thanks very, very much for joining us on the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Blade Showcase, and I will see you at the next thing, whatever that may be. Take care, everyone.